हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी दंडवत प्रणाम संजय प्रभु जी आई हैव वन ऑफ माय डियर फ्रेंड गैब्रियल सिटिंग हियर सो इज जॉइनिंग फॉर द डिस्कशन सो विल बिगिन नाउ ओम ज्ञातिरांधस्यानाशनाकुवे स्वयं कदमा स्वादातिक वंदेह श्री गुरो श्रीयुतापदकमश्वांश श्रीरूपाधुता हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगतपते गोपेशा गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमस्ते भक्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वंश श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांता स्वामी नमिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देश तारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैता कदाधार श्रीवासादि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे मुखम करोति वाचाल पंगुम लंगाते यहां वंदे श्री गुरु दीन तारिण परमाधव श्री चैतन्य
ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय So we are continuing our discussion from last week on Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto. Today we will be focusing on the 18th chapter from first canto. And the name of chapter is The, uh, the Curse of Maharaj Parikshit. <clears throat> mm. So last week we saw after the Pandavas, they, de they departed Maharaj Parikshit, who was the grandson of Arjun, he was established as the king. When he was there, there was the rise of the influence of the age of Kali. And everything was deteriorating. And Maharaj Parikshit, he, when he came to this place of Kurukshetra, that's where... The Mahabharat war happened and that's where Bhagavad Gita was spoken. When Maharaj Parishit came there, he saw that Kali, he was breaking the last leg of Dharma. We saw that Dharma stands on four pillars. Austerity is broken. Cleanliness is broken. The pillar of austerity is gone. Pillar of cleanliness is gone. Um, truthfulness pillar, the last pillar that remains. And the pillar of mercy is gone. And the last pillar is the pillar of truthfulness that also this age of Kali was breaking. Um, Dharma stands on four legs and that was represented by the bull. <clears throat> and then um, uh, Parikshit Maharaj, there was a cow who was Mother Earth herself standing in form of a cow and Dharma or religion was standing in the form of a bull. They both were being tortured. Mother Earth was being tortured and Dharma, religion, was being tortured by the effect of the age of Kali. When Maharaj Parikshit inquired about what is the cause, he obviously he knows Kali, the personality of Kali standing next. When he inquired from Dharma, uh, from Mother Earth, uh, what is the cause of your suffering? They say that if anybody points out somebody as a cause of one suffering, then they also are incriminated by sin. And uh, in essence, whatever suffering one acquires is the results of one own, one's own past, one's past karma. Nobody else is responsible, but according to dharma, if one points out fingers on somebody mm -hmm. as the cause of one suffering, um, then they actually don't understand dharma. And anybody who points fingers on others also is equally in ignorant and equally an offender for pointing at somebody for one's own fault. So he also becomes an offender. <clears throat> After hearing this response from Bun, Maharaj Parikshi could ascertain that you, by the words you have spoken, I, I can understand that you are personality of dharma, personality of religion who are standing in the form of a bull. And then Maharaj Parikshit, he wanted to punish Kali because he was very powerful. Then Kali um, surrendered to Maharaj Parikshit. <clears throat> and um, he requested for a place to stay. Then Maharaj Parikshit told him, you can stay wherever there is meat eating, wherever there is gambling, where they would, wherever there is illicit sex and wherever there is intoxication. Wherever these four things are there, you can stay in the heart of those people and in those places where these things are happening. But during that time, there were no such people and there were no such places. So Kali said, at this point of time, there is no such place. Then Maharaj Padiksh had said that, okay, you can also stay in gold or whoever is attached to the riches will also be influenced by the impact of Kali. And then Maharaj Parikshit, he surrendered and then he left. 
I mean, um, yeah, Kali surrendered and Kali left. Then Maharaj Parikshit uh, re-established all the four principles of Dharma. He re-established mercy, austerity, truthfulness. <clears throat> um, and cleanliness. He re-established these four principles. And that's the end of chapter 17. And this is at the beginning, then... Uh, this is a conversation between Sutta Goswami and the sages. Mm -hmm. So Sutta Goswami then summarizes the life of Maharaj Parikshit. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Maharaj Parikshit, <clears throat> um, by the mercy of the Lord, Maharaj Parikshit was about to die when he was in the womb of his mother Uttara. But by the mercy of Lord Krishna, Maharaj Parikshit was saved from the Brahmastra, from the nuclear weapon. Prabhupada compared Brahmastra to nuclear weapon. This demoniac personality, Ashwadhamma, he released the nuclear weapon to kill Maharaj Parikshit. And Maharaj Parikshit was saved from the nuclear weapon by the mercy of Lord Krishna. <clears throat> then, uh, towards the end of the life of Maharaj Parikshit, he was... Uh, uh, Maharaj Parikshit was cursed um, to die in seven days by a snake bird. Um, but even though he was cursed to die in seven days, Maharaj Parikshit was not overwhelmed by fear because he was surrendered. This is one important point. Fear is there um, and one can overcome fear by having the faith in the Lord. <clears throat> because fear is there because I don't know what future holds. Or maybe uh, what will happen, and that um, that fear, that anxiety, it um, um, makes us uh, <clears throat> basically the fear of future brings a lot of anxiety in our heart. For example, I know many parents have fear about children' education when they grow up, because education in America is very expensive. Or um, I know some people also have fears about what if about the health of either the son or the husband or family members. Those kind of fears are also there. So our life is full of fears. What? Because future is uncertain and brings a lot of anxiety in the present. <clears throat> but if one uh, surrenders to the Lord, then the fear will go away. Actually, fear is not a healthy emotion. It does not mean that we don't plan. Um, but then surrender means whatever Krishna wants will happen anyway. So I don't have to take the anxiety. Um, by, by my fearing, the action which is supposed to happen will not go. Um, <clears throat> we see that great devotees do not have fear about themselves also. Actually, it is described in the scriptures that what one loves the most is oneself. And, and in oneself, what one loves the most is one's own body. Actually, we, we are very compassionate on ourselves. But we are um, um, not so with others. Like one simply, any... <clears throat> Anyways, we easily forgive ourselves. Any faults in us, we are okay with that. Um, but when there is something in others, we try to we try to point out. <clears throat> but surrender means um, if if this is what Krishna wants in future, I have a fear of future. If this is what Krishna wants in the future, I surrender to Krishna's will. Let that happen. Um, I will depend on Krishna. Um, and so he was not overwhelmed by fear, although he was cursed to die in seven days. Then um, after being cursed, he went to the bank of Ganges. He was uncertain about a duty of a man who is about to die in seven days. He was treated by many sages who came to support him. And then came Sukadev Goswami. He surrendered to Sukadev Goswami that I have only seven days. What should I do? 
Sukadev Goswami accepted him as a disciple. <clears throat> then he, after seven days of hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, Maharaj Parikshit left the body. And his death is considered as glorious because it is said, what is a glorious death? It is said, what is a glorious death? A glorious death is um, when one constantly remembers the lotus feet of the Lord. And when one dedicate one's life to hear about the Lord. If we use our if we if our life is used to hear about the Lord from revealed scriptures and to remember the lotus feet of the Lord, then then our life and our death will also be glorious. And that's what Maharaj Parikshit's mind was always fixed on remembering the feet of the Lord. And last seven days he was constantly hearing the glories of the Lord. So he had a glorious death. When Maharaj Parikshit was there in his presence, because he was very strong, Kali could not exert his influence. But as soon as Maharaj Parikshit left, Kali became uh, full-blown. And when Maharaj Parikshit, it is described that Maharaj Parikshit is, was non-envious. In fact, when he saw Kali, the personality of Kali, Maharaj Parikshit was not envious of Kali. Maharaj Parikshit stopped him uh, from... Um, breaking the dharma, but he was not envious because Kali Kali is full of faults, but Kali has two great qualities and because of which Kali is worshipped. One of the great qualities of Kali we know that simply by chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, one can be, one can counter the effect of Kali, one can be delivered. Um, this is one benefit of Kali. Another good quality of Kali is any any positive activity, even if desired in the mind, the benefit is there. Even if we desire a positive activity in the mind, just by thinking in the mind, you get the benefit of actually doing it. And any sinful act, by desiring in the mind, you don't get the reaction. You don't get the reaction of sin unless you actually perform the sin. But if you actually think of a pious activity, you get the benefit. This is opposite to Sati Yoga. So in Sati Yoga, like <clears throat> if you think bad about a person, you are incriminated. But in Kali Yoga, you think bad about a person or you think of any sinful activity in the mind, no reaction. But in Sati Yoga, for example, you give charity of cows. In Sati Yoga, unless you give the charity of cows, you won't get the benefit. But in Kali Yoga, um, simply by thinking of, oh, this person is so nice. I wish I could give everything to this person that I have. Just by thinking like that, you get the benefit of actually, you get the benefit of actually giving everything that you have to that person, to the Brahmana, just by thinking. So these are the two, two great qualities of Kali. Good activities in the mind give you the same benefit and bad activities in the mind have no reaction. Unless they are actually committed. So when Maharaj Padikshit saw that this is Kali, there are a lot of faults, but there are these two great qualities. So uh, it is said Maharaj Padikshit was like a bee. Um, a, a bumblebee is, there may be so much garbage, but a bumblebee is always eager to directly go to the flower and suck nectar from it. Um, a crow is one who um, there may be so much nectar in the flowers, but a crow always goes to where garbage is there, where trash is there, and they feed on the trash. So Maharaj Parikshit, although he saw that Kali was, there were so many faults in Kali, but he just saw that the great quality, simply in the mind you do and simply by chanting, everything will happen. He saw this is a wonderful age. So that's why he was not envious because he did not find fault in Kali. <clears throat> and that's and then uh, Maharaj Parikshit had a glorious death um, by remembering the Lord and by dedicating his life to hear the glories of the Lord. And that's how then he starts speaking. Um, um, Sutta Goswami stops, stops speaking. And then Sutta Goswami says that uh, those who want perfection in their life must uh, hear the topics that are either directly about Lord Hari 
for that are connected to maybe Lord Hari means Lord Krishna. That is directly about Lord Krishna or that, that are connected or those that are related to Lord Krishna. Somehow or other, one must hear these topics. Just by hearing, one will attain perfection. And then Sutta Goswami stopped speaking uh, because one of the questions that the sages asked Sutta Goswami was, um, please describe the birth activities and passing of the Maharaj Parikshit. So in this way, he's, he says in the short, then the sages start speaking, who were listening. Mm. Mm. The sages says, oh, my dear Sutta Goswami, um, you have you are giving a nectar to the immortals immortal you are giving a nectar and making us in by giving us nectar you are making us immortal or everybody in this world is mortal mortal means and death can come at any point of time but what is the purpose of nectar the purpose of nectar is to make one immortal like there was a churning of milk ocean where the nectar was produced and uh, the idea was whoever drinks that nectar will become immortal. That's what the word nectar means, which makes one immortal. And the sages here compare Hari Katha as nectar, Krishna Katha, the glories of the Lord, the discussion of the Lord as nectar. Anybody who hears about the Lord and his devotees, they will conquer death. How they conquer death? Um, there is no death for them again because they go to the they go back to the kingdom of God. So that's why it will make them immortal. Immortal means no more death, no more birth and death. So the sages told Sutta Goswami, we are so grateful to you because you are making us immortal by giving the nectar of the glories and the pastimes of Lord Krishna. Um, we have assembled here for a great sacrifice and our bodies have become black because of the smoke that is coming from the fire sacrifice. But still, we are very pleased in our heart because of the nectar that is emanating from your mouth that glorifies Lord Govinda. And anybody who has once tasted or once relished the nectar of hearing about the glories of the Lord can never be satiated. Satiated means like can never be satisfied. And can never be satiated means he can never feel like I have heard enough glories of the Lord because the glories of the Lord the nature of the glories of the Lord is once somebody hears the glories of the Lord, they are attractive, they satisfy the heart and mind. One is satisfied at that point of time, but the moment one stops hearing, again the material anxieties take over. So anybody who has developed taste in hearing the glories of the Lord can never be satiated. Means he... He, he is eager or he hankered to hear continuously. That is the nature. <clears throat> and then the sages said, uh, um, the, um, what is the qualification of the speaker? What is the qualification of the listener? The qualification of speaker, um, the sages says, is... Um, that Krishna should be the chief object of their service. Um, we see like Srila Prabhupada, we see our spiritual masters, these great personalities who are the bona fide speakers. We see Krishna is the sole objective of their service. They are always constantly, whatever they are trying to do, they are trying to serve Krishna through each and every act of theirs. So that is the actual qualification of a speaker. Krishna is the chief objective of their, of their service. And the qualification of a listener is that the listener must be eager. Let me see what comes out. And then, the, like we see Arjuna and Krishna, Bhagavad Gita. Arjuna was eager to listen and he's inquiring and asking questions. And Krishna and his Supreme Lord himself. <clears throat> so these sages are telling that you are only serving, directly serving Krishna. And we are very eager to hear. So please continue. Please describe. Please continue the, the glories, the pastimes. He said, okay, now I have described whatever you wish to hear. Then they say, you know, we cannot stop hearing from you. Uh, we just want to keep hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. And then after this, 
then they said Maharaj Parikshit. We have heard the sages said to Sutta Goswami. The sages said we have heard Maharaj Parikshit. And during those seven days before his departure, Maharaj Parikshit heard Bhagavatam from Sukadev Goswami. And by hearing that Bhagavatam, he attained the kingdom of God. So can you repeat everything that Sukadev Goswami spoke? In other words, um, their hankering to hear about the Lord is so much. You know, one hearing is, uh, we are hearing it and we will be like, uh, okay, now time up. So that's all we can hear now. But here we see the eagerness. Of course, the qualification of the speaker is very high. They are pure devotees of the Lord. And the eagerness of the listeners, that they are afraid that Hari Katha will stop. So they are asking, um, they said, okay, now I have described everything you want. So then they did not say Shri Prabhupada ki jai. Then they are like, um, uh, no, okay, very nice. Thank you so much for speaking. But then seven days he heard, and by hearing what he heard, he attained perfection. We also want to attain perfection. Can you speak everything that he heard? Um, and then they finally glorified the sages. Um, at last, they glorified um, the the um, the qualities of Krishna Katha. The glories of Krishna Katha. And they say that uh, Hari Katha is always purifying. Anybody who hears will become pure. It is full of divine potency. The glories of the Lord and the glories of pure devotees of the Lord. The glories of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They have a divine potency. Um, they are spiritual by nature. We hear material topics, politics and all these things. And we are bored. And we are like, ah, I don't want to hear these things. Or let's change the topic. But there is no spiritual divinity there. But when we hear about the Lord and the pure devotees of the Lord, these messages are surcharged with divine potency. And they are very purifying. These, these activities are wonderful. Activities of pure devotees, activities of Mar Prahlad Maharaj, wonderful. Activities of Dhruva Maharaj was wonderful. Activities of Parikshit Maharaj was wonderful. Activities of Ambarish Maharaj was wonderful. Activities of Narad Muni are wonderful. Activities of Krishna are wonderful. Hiranyakashi Dev is wonderful. Activities of Lord Ram is wonderful. Everything that connects to Lord or his pure devotees, all their, everything about them is wonderful. And this subject matter is a supreme subject matter. I mean, those who want to hear, there is nothing better than this subject matter to hear. <clears throat> and then Sutta Goswami speaks. Sutta Goswami, very nicely Sutta Goswami says. We will read this verse in detail at the end. Sutta Goswami says that uh, I was born, I was born in a lower caste or lower birth. He was from a mixed caste because one of his parents was a Brahmana and one was from a lower caste. So he was born in a mis mixed caste. And he says, uh, Sutta Goswami says that those who are born in lower caste they can overcome that disqualification of birth and lower caste can be overcome by hearing and serving the devotees of the Lord. That disqualification of being born in a lower caste can be overcome. In other words, um, this is very interesting. The Sutta Goswami is a mixed caste and he is speaking to the sages headed by Sonaka Rishi. Sonaka Rishi is a Brahmana. All the sages are Brahmana. He is from a mixed or lower caste and he is addressing to all the, all the great Brahmanas and great Rishis. And he is speaking. So he says this is the benefit of hearing and serving the devotees of the Lord. Because he personally heard from Sukadeva Goswami in the assembly of the sages, now that disqualification is gone and he is qualified to speak on this topic. Then he says, uh, um, what to speak about, uh, this is the effect of hearing, what to speak about chanting. Those who, those who speak these glories and those who chant the holy name of Krishna. Chanting can be chanting the pastimes of the Lord and chanting can be of the name of the Lord. And then he says that the Lord's activities are unlimited. Um, they are 
supremely wonderful, supremely glorious, and they are unlimited. Um, there is, we also hear that uh, Sankarshan, who is Ananta or the snake that is holding the universe, he is glorifying the glories of the Lord um, since time immemorial. And still, he could only describe uh, a particle of the glories of the Lord. He is constantly glorifying the Lord. In other words, uh, nobody, even Krishna's Kaviran Goswami, when he is writing Chaitanya Charitamrita, he mentions that uh, the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya are unlimited. And I am only describing a speck of the whole, whole ocean. A drop of the whole ocean. That's what I am capable of describing. So when the series asks Sutta Goswami that please continue describing the glories of the Lord. Sutta Goswami in his humility, he feels himself, himself unqualified. And he says, uh, the glories of the Lord are unlimited and how much can I describe? And then Sutta Goswami says, uh, I will try to describe the glories of the Lord. But um, as far as my realization goes, just like a bird can fly as high as the capacity of the bird. A bird has a particular capacity, cannot hide, cannot fly higher than her capacity. Likewise, I cannot describe the glories of the Lord that are beyond my uh, realization. Um, the glories of the Lord are unlimited. I can speak on. This is humility of Sita Goswami. <clears throat> And then um, Sutta Goswami says, who are dhiras? Dhira means stable-minded. Who are dhiras? Whose mind is stable? They are those who are firmly attached to Lord Krishna. Those who are firmly attached to Lord Krishna, they are always dhira. And because they are firmly attached to Lord Krishna, they, they, are, they are naturally renounced. So the Prabhupada says, to the extent we become attached to Krishna, to that extent, the uh, material attachment will go down. <clears throat> and to the extent we are not focusing on Krishna, uh, if we are not consciously focusing on Krishna, our, um, our material attachment may increase. If we are not focusing on Krishna, then we are focusing on something in this world. And whatever we are focusing in this world, whatever we are contemplating in this world, there we will develop attachment. So dhira, dhira means one who is unaffected. Dhiras are those who are attached to the sweet of Krishna, who are attached to Krishna. So for them, um, they are friend of all living entities and ups and downs are not disturbed because they are not attached. <clears throat> How much joy or how much suffering we experience in this world is based on our attachment. Like uh, um, one time, uh, His Grace Yugal Bishop Prabhuji was mentioning, he was telling me that one time he went to the program and somewhere in New York, he had a program in, don't remember, but one, one of the university. And there was husband and wife who came to attend the program. And then the wife just got the news that her mother passed away. And the wife was uh, like crying, broken, um, shocked. And the husband was trying to console her wife. So later on, Prabhuji was telling me that uh, she was so much affected by the death of her mother because she has a stronger relationship with her mother. And the husband was not so much affected. Um, wife's mother died because husband did not have that level of attachment the way wife had to her own mother. So Prabhupada was mentioning uh, how much we are affected, how much misery we experience when things doesn't go well is based on our attachment. And same is how much happiness we experience something goes well. If you are very attached to cer certain thing and things go in that way, but we are attached, we become very joyful. And if we are not attached to something and something wonderful happens, but we are not concerned about it, 
For example, COVID medicine was released. And if we are not so much concerned about COVID, then for us, okay, medicine came very nice. But for those who are doing research and whose day and night is to get the medicine out for COVID, for them, once the, the experiment is successful, for them, it's like um, attain the perfection of their life. So how much joy we experience in this world is based on what we are attached to and how much misery we experience in this world is also based on what we are attached to. But because the dhiras or the unaffected, stable-minded, they are attached to Lord Krishna, they, when we are purposes, to the extent we are attached to Lord Krishna, to that much extent, to be are detached from matter, from this world. And because we are firmly attached to Lord Krishna, they are neither happy nor miserable in this world because they are not attached. And that's why their natural quality is renounced. Renunciation, I was sharing recently, renunciation does not mean to wear saffron and leave everything. Renunciation means, renunciation is an act of consciousness. It's a state of consciousness. It's not there in the mind. When there is no attachment or aversion in the mind, but it is only a state of duty, then we are truly renounced. And those who are firmly attached to Krishna, they are truly renounced. And that's why they are called dhiras. Okay. And then uh, Sutta Goswami describes the position of Krishna. He says, who else can you call as Bhagavan? Can you call as God? Who else? From Krishna's feet, Ganges emanated. And that Ganges were respectfully held by Brahma. And wherever the Ganges flows, it purifies the whole place, including Shiva. Even Lord Shiva was purified by holding Ganges on her head. And even Brahma, even Brahma, um, um, with the, uh, great reverence, he collected the water of Ganges. So the water coming from one of the name of Ganges, Ganga, is also called Vishnupadi, Vishnupad, who is coming from the feet of Vishnu. So he says, just see the personalities in this world. They have so much reverence for Ganga that is emanating from the toe of Krishna. So who else can be called as Bhagavad? And <clears throat> this is what so what did Sutta Goswami say? Sutta Goswami says the importance of serving and hearing from devotees. The disqualification of lower birth can be overcome. What to speak about those who are chanting those glories and chanting the names of the Lord? What will be their uh, qualification? Um, he um, and he said Sutta Goswami says the glories of the Lord are unlimited and it is not possible for anybody to describe them. Um, I am not qualified to describe the glories of the Lord, but I will speak as far as my realization goes. Then he says, Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead because the water that is emanating from his feet is taken with reverence and purifies all the three words, including Brahma and Shiva. And those who who are firmly attached to Krishna are Dhiras. They don't go to happiness and distress in this world. <clears throat> and their natural qualities, they are renounced in their mind. And these people are not violent. They are well wishes of all living entities. And having spoken, taking a humble position, after being, so first, Sutta Goswami described the birth activities and the passing away of Maharaj Parikshit quickly, then the sages became very much concerned. They said, we are becoming immortal just by hearing, just like the whole Bhagavatam you said, seven days describe everything that has been heard. Um, um, Sutta Goswami becomes pleased. Sutta Goswami says, I'm not qualified to describe. And then uh, I will still, as a service, I will describe as far as my relation goes. And then he start again describing the glorious life of Parikshit Maharaj in detail. And then he says once when Maharaj Parikshit was uh, um, uh, um, going through the kingdom uh, offering protection 
against evil elements. Uh, many days passed and Maharaj Pariksit did not get any food or water. And he was completely thirsty, like choking to death. It's completely dry. And thirst and hunger completely overcame him. And he was exhausted. This also shows that although he was the king um, of the whole of the whole earth planet, he was the king. He did not send a troop of soldiers, you go and see there's any evil elements, bring them to me. But he himself was in the forefront and trying to protect everybody under his protection and working so hard that there is no food, no water for many days. And he was working so hard that he was completely exhausted and fatigued by constant traveling to protect the nation. And then when he was not able to walk any longer, he entered into um, he entered into a hermitage, um, a sage's home. And then he saw that there was a rishi who was in trance, um, sitting straight, eyes completely closed and in deep meditation. And it is described that uh, there are three stages of existence. One is wakefulness, one is uh, dreaming, and one is deep sleep. Uh, either we are awake, or when we are sleeping, we are dreaming, or when we are in completely in ignorance, then we are sleeping and there is no dream also. These are the three stages of existence. And this stage, he was beyond the three stages of existence. This stage of beyond three stages of existence is called Brahma Bhuta stage. Uh, so when Samik Rishi was um, sitting deep meditation, there is no effect of the three modes. Wakefulness is goodness. Dream is mode of passion. And, and deep sleep without any dream is mode of ignorance. But he was beyond these three stages of existence. He was constantly remembering, remembering Brahman. So he was there. This is called transcendental stage or samadhi. And his mind, intelligence, and senses were completely restrained. Means none of them were functioning, and he was fully focused on Brahman. <clears throat> the king, the king was thinking whether he is like it is not so easy to attain that stage. So the king, by the will of the Lord, the king was uncertain whether he is acting like this or whether he is actually in Samadhi. But it is very rare to find such. He was a great sage who was actually in complete Samadhi. But the king thought that actually he is not uh, like he is acting, maybe, possibly. And the king thought, um, if anybody comes to your home, you should greet them with kind words. You should offer them a seat to sit. You should offer them some water. And because he neither gave seat, nor water, nor kind words, the king felt it as a breach of etiquette and king became very angry. And Bhagavatam describes his anger was unprecedented. Unprecedented means king has never become angry like that. King would not become angry. Unprecedented never happened before. And the reason it happened, Maharaj Pariksit has complete control over his mind and senses. When he heard Bhagavatam for seven days, he did not drink any water or eat anything. Seven days. No sleep, no eat, no eating, no drinking. And he was completely absorbed in hearing Bhagavatam. So when a personality of such caliber, how is it possible that he is overcome by thirst and hunger? And it is described, it was the will of the Lord. So the Srimad Bhagavatam could be spoken. So his anger was unprecedented and he became envious towards the Brahmana. That the Brahmana is neglecting. Why is the Brahmana treating me like this? By the will of the Lord. And then the king, he, he has a bow and arrow. He took the bow. The king saw in the hermitage, there was a dead snake. He picked the dead snake with his bow and he said, and he, and he garlanded the sage with a dead snake around the neck of the rishi of the sage um, and then um, then Maharaj Parishit left um, in the meantime this sage had a son um, this also shows that the, the ashram is not a qualification for perfection and he was in the ashram obviously he had a son but he was so absorbed in the lord that he was in samadhi he was beyond the stages of existence
Yeah, but the son it is described was not very mature. The son was playing uh, on the bank of a river. It's called Koshika River. Son was playing with his friends and the news reached him. <clears throat> um, the son had Brahminical powers. And it is said his Brahminical powers were coming. One is from his own training and one is from his birth. Um, but the son was, although he had Brahminical powers, he was puffed up with those Brahminical powers because of the influence of Kali. Now, previously, all the time, the Brahmanas have a lot of power, but the Brahmanas never misused their power. Uh, one example is Vashishta Muni. Vashishta Muni was very powerful, but when Vishwamitra attacked him, then only to protect himself, Vashishta Muni, he showed his powers to Vishwamitra. Otherwise, Vashishta, Vashishta Rishi, who was also the guru of Lord Sri Ramchandra, he would not show these great sages, these Brahmanas, they have many powers, but they don't show off because they are just using whatever they have in the service of the Lord. But by the effect of Kali, the Shringi, he was very puffed up, see what I have. That's why it is said that power, uh, power um, in the hand of those who are not very mature is a cause of destruction. And here, uh, Shringi, he um, he, he was very powerful. He could, I mean, he had Brahminical powers. <clears throat> he, uh, uh, Shringi, he heard the news uh, how my father was mistreated by the king. So he said uh, to all his friends, he said, uh, um, just look at these sinful uh, rulers. They are just like dogs. So he's telling to Maharaj Kalikshit, who was the great Mahabhagavat Vaishnava. Right and Singh is telling that just they are like watchdogs. Watchdogs at the door sinning against their master. Now Prabhupada says in the purport, uh, the king can be compared as a watchdog because um, dogs are meant to um, give protection and the king's role is to give protection to the whole planet. And they are called watchdogs um, 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 because the king, although he is a king, uh, he was going through the roads. Uh, he was going anywhere and everywhere to see if there are any evil elements that he can. Everybody is peaceful at home. Uh, you know, when there is when there is a dog actually outside, the residents are relatively more peaceful because if any evil elements comes, the dog will bark, and nobody can nobody will come inside out of fear. So because the king is there. Uh, uh, walking on the surface of the earth and he is very powerful. People are uh, people are feeling safe inside because of the king's power. Uh, but Shingi, he took it in a negative way and Shingi said, just see they're like watchdogs um, and they are committing an offense against their master. This is also, there is, there is truth in that also, but the mood is not correct because Chatriya uh, Prabhupada says is compared to the arm um, of the Lord and the Brahmanas are like the head and the arms must be used. Arms give protection. Um, so that's Chatriyas are compared to the arm of the Lord. But the arms work as directed by the head. How and where the arm should be used. So Chatriyas are naturally working under Brahmanas. So he, now this is another thing. There is no absolute rule in this material world. Um, um, now, although he was a king, all the Brahmanas are his masters in a way. So he, he also, being the emperor, is not absolutely free to do whatever he likes. Otherwise, if somebody is absolutely free, a king absolutely free without Brahmana's control, they will be like Hirnakashipur and Avana. They are like, I don't care about anybody, I am the ruler and I will do what I want. So, there is truth in that, but the way he spoke and what he spoke, they're like watchdogs at the door, mm -hmm. sinning against their masters. How can the dogs that guard the door enter the master's house to dine with them? How can the dog who are meant to guard come inside the house and uh, treat the master in this way? So he was very spiteful himself, Shringi, very immature, does not understand the selfless service of the king. 
and the great position of the king. Um, he criticized the king. He says, then Sringi says, um, just after, uh, just after Krishna's departure, um, Kali Yoga has um, flourished and we can see how Kali is flourishing by seeing how these dogs, watch dogs, are entering and treating their masters. It can be said Kali is progressing. Actually, this is another very interesting point that uh, uh, Shringi himself was affected by Kali. That's why, because of the influence of Kali, he was uh, proud of his powers. He was immature and he seemed part in such a great saintly king. And um, someone who is in fault sees the same fault in others. Like Saraswati Thakur says, whatever fault we see in others is a reflection of the fault that we have. When we point one finger at somebody else, three fingers are pointing towards ourselves. Uh, so because he was influenced by Kali, which flourished after Lord Krishna's departure, he is seeing how these watchdogs, this immature king, it is another thing, he called king immature because he was immature. So he is calling king as immature. He is calling king as influenced by um, or how these rulers are. After Lord Krishna's departure, how these uh, sinners, how they are uh, flourishing, it can be seen the effect of Kali is increasing. And Shringi said, now, I, since I am there, I will punish such sinful rulers. He said that. This is, this is all um, um, this is too much pride. This thing is telling now Krishna has departed and Kali is progressing. I will check and uh, now see what I do. Um, then Shringi uh, took the water from Kaushika River in his palms and he declared, um, I curse um, this upstart sinful watchdog of this Kuru dynasty. I curse him to be uh, bitten by a snake bird in seven days to death for offending the great sage as my father. And very loudly, uh, Shringi spoke like that. Then, <clears throat> um, then Shringi came back. Um, he was very angry. Shringi entered the house. He saw his father, Samikrishi, sitting in trance and around his neck there was a dead snake when Shringi saw that um, Shringi became uh, Shringi started crying very loudly um, first of all he was very disturbed now because he committed an offense because he cursed whenever one becomes angry for not a proper reason the whole mind is agitated actually so uh, the whole mind is polluted so he was very uh, disturbed already and when he came he saw that disturbance along with seeing out of his affection for his father and when he saw that snake he started crying very loudly then hearing that uh, Samikrishi uh, meditation Samadhi broke Samikrishi opened his eyes he saw the son is crying very loudly and he saw around him there was a dead snake so Samikrishi peacefully took the snake and threw it onto the ground. And Samikri, she asked his son, he said, um, has somebody offended you? Um, why are you crying? So that showed that Samikri, she was because he was beyond, he was attached to Brahman. He was not a pure devotee of the Lord, but he was Brahma Bhuta, Brahman realized. Um, very peaceful. He did not see any offense in the dead snake. Um, but he could understand what had happened because of his divine vision. But he became concerned why the son is crying. So he asked the son, has somebody offended you? And the son said uh, the whole story that you have been garlanded. I have cursed him to die in seven days by a snake bird. Samikrishi became very much concerned. Samikrishi became very much disturbed. He said, alas, uh, oh my dear son, what have you done? You have for such an insignificant offense, insignificant offense, 
you have given him an undue punishment of death now you know here also government if you do like if you say insult somebody nobody will take you to the court and put you in jail forever or you know people do lot of wrong things and still they are given uh, imprisonment for few days or or maybe a month or few months at max but there was no harm to some migrishi it was an insult but that was also the king said the insult was maybe it was very insignificant he is not telling no offense he is telling very insignificant offense because no harm and that too because he was uh, overcome by fatigue war thirst and hunger i mean imagine if we have not for ourselves also if we have not drunk water for few days and not eaten anything for few days and we are constantly walking and protecting and constantly serving and we are exhausted um, and we go somewhere for just some water and they don't receive us who are basically our subject in a way because he is the ruler and they don't receive us um, we will be like becoming angry like anything even you know for a very short cause for almost no cause we become angry what to speak of maharaj felix even then he was such his body mind and senses were so much controlled even then he would not become it was only the will of the lord that he became angry so um um samikeshi could understand and he saw what the sin uh, he said you have committed a great, great sin by by punishing a sinless uh, with such a great punishment the father told this the son the son was telling the son was thinking the king has done a greatest sin by insulting my father they are like dogs um, they are uh, treating they have come into the house of the master and they are treating the master in this way this is the effect of kali this is all after krishna has departed but the son because and he was very much proud of his own powers and the son because he was full of faults he could not see the reality he was just reflecting his consciousness onto everybody else but samik rishi was beyond so he could understand everything as it is and he heavily chastised his son then the king naturally um, the father the father loves his son so he started explaining he says uh, my dear son do you know the king is the representative of the supreme lord and the king is considered as the best of the human yes. citizens they um, um they are prosperous every every citizen is prosperous everything is in law and order it is because of his protection and because of his power um, when there are no kings the world will be filled with thieves there are no thieves around because of the power of the king if the once the kings go after 7 days once he dies you know what will be the what will happen to this earth the earth will be filled with thieves um, and the unprotected people will scatter like lambs you know the lambs are afraid um, so they go here and there to hide themselves when there is fear uh, right now everyone is safe everyone is in their house the women old people children everyone feel protected they can go anywhere they want uh, but once no thieves but once the king dies because of your immature understanding thieves will fill up this place and uh, uh, all these people will start running and hiding and everybody will scatter out of fear like lambs animals will be stolen wealth will be stolen women will be stolen all the three will be stolen wealth will be stolen animals will be stolen women will be stolen people will be killed and injured i mean naturally when um, women wealth and animal is stolen they will fight and the other people who are thieves they will fight they will kill the men also steal the women animal and uh, wealth um, um, this will be the state of this planet and then somebody like said who will be responsible for all that don't you see what he is offering and for such a small um insignificant mistake 
which which is quite understandable you curse him to die nobody gives a capital punishment for few bad words spoken they just at least give a warning and they leave but you give him a death punishment uh, for that unwanted population because the woman will be stolen there will be unwanted population that will be like dogs and monkeys will come the whole varnashram will be destroyed and on the other hand maharaj parikshit is a raja rishi raja rishi means he is a raja and he is a rishi he is a king but he is a sage so the the kings that time are very saintly that's why they are called the raja rishi and samvikti she says he is a mahabhagavat he has performed many ashwamed yagyas so his qualification is very high he has performed many ashwamed yagya such after maharaj parikshit no king performed any ashwamed yagya and that ashwamed yagya is a great endeavor that is also only for the protection of the citizens and for the prosperity of the citizens not for oneself so he is a raja rishi he is a mahabhagavat he has performed many ashwamedha yagya everybody is very protected because of his rule and because of circumstantial offense just a circumstantial thing because of fatigue hunger and thirst what have you done and then um, the father could understand great suffering will come to his son for what he has done then the father prayed to krishna he says my lord please forgive due to his immature intelligence he has cursed a sinless mahabhagavat vishnu um, a great offense has been performed his bad parikshit offense if it all it was there first of all it was will of the lord if it all it was there it was highly insignificant but the offense of shringi the immature son was very high such a great offense and he has because of his immature intelligence um um uh, power in the wrong hand he was prayed to the lord my lord please forgive him and the last at the last verse uh, 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 sammi krishi glorifies the devotees of the lord he says that devotees are very tolerant by nature even if you curse them even if you cheat them even if you neglect them if you insult them or even if you kill them although they are capable of taking a revenge they do not take revenge so samakrishi already he has not sent the news to maharaj parikshit that the king is cursed to die in 7 days but he, before he is telling his son see the greatness in other words this also signifies that uh, shringi was not a great personality because little bit insult and he cursed but the king is a great personality and we will see when the king received the news the king took it as the lord's mercy and he surrendered and he wanted to go to the series and hear hari katha and be with the series and factors devotional service so he was completely fixed he took everything as the will of the lord and he has no enmity towards shringi this is the greatness of maharaj parikshit but shringi was such an immature um um uh, <laughs> we call it kali chela chela of kali that he has maharaj parikshit in this way okay so that's the end of this chapter we will read one quick words you give me a second सुत उवाच अहो वय जन्म भृतुद्याहाश्मा वृद्धावृत्या विलोम जाता दौष्कुल्यधीं विदुनोति शीघ्र महात्मान श्री सुत गोस्वामी सेड ओ गॉड ऑल दो वी आर बॉन्ड इन अ मिक्स कैस्ट we are still promoted in birth right simply by serving and following the great who are advanced in knowledge even by conversing with such great souls one can without delay cleanse oneself 
of all disqualifications resulting from lower birth. So the Goswami did not take his birth in a Brahmana family. He was born in a family of mixed class or an uncultured low family. But because of higher association like Sri Sukadev Goswami and the great rishis of Naimi Sharanya, certainly the disqualification of inferior birth was washed off. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu followed this principle in pursuance of the Vedic usages. And by his transcendental association, he elevated many low-born or those disqualified by birth or action to the status of devotional service and established them in the position of acharyas or authorities. He clearly stated that any man, whatever he may be, whether a Brahmana or Shudra, by birth or a householder or a mendicant in the order of society, if he is conversant with the signs of Krishna, he can be accepted as an Acharya or Guru a spiritual or a spiritual master. So the Goswami learned the signs of Krishna from great rishis and authorities like Sukadev and Vyasadev and he was so qualified that even the sages of Nemesharanya, who are basically Brahmanas, eagerly wanted to hear from him the signs of Krishna in the form of Srimad Bhagavatam. So he had the double association of great souls by hearing and by preaching. He heard from great souls and he was speaking about Krishna. I mean, lower birth means they are generally not interested in spiritual life and they are very much attached materially. But by the association of great sages, they are interested now in Krishna consciousness and in practicing devotional service which is actually the birthright of Brahmanas. They become peaceful, they become tall, and they, they develop all the good qualities so that disqualification of lower birth is removed by that association. And on the top, now they are speaking also about Krishna, which is again a Brahmanical activity. So, so he had a double association of great souls by hearing and preaching. Transcendental science or the science of Krishna has to be learned from the authorities. And when one preaches the science, he becomes still more qualified. So that is why we recommend everybody, like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Jare Dekha Tare Kha Krishna Upadesh. If we want to advance, first we hear, we practice, and then we share. If you hear and practice and you speak what you are hearing and practicing, these two will remove all the contaminations from, from because, due to one's birth. When one preaches the science, he becomes still more qualified. So, Sutta Goswami had both the advantages. And thus, undoubtedly, he was completely freed from all disqualifications of low birth and mental agonies. This was definitely proof that Srila Sukadev Goswami did not refuse to teach Sutta Goswami about the transcendental science. Nowadays in India, especially, they say, well, if you are not a Brahmana, then I won't teach you. This is there during Dwapar Yuga also. But he has, although Sutta Goswami was from mixed caste or lower caste, Sukadeva Goswami did not refuse to teach Sutta Goswami about the transcendental science. Nor did the sages of Nameshwaranya refuse to hear lessons from him because of his inferior birth. The sages did not say, you are not a Brahmana born, so how can we hear Harikatha from you? But they are very eager to hear and they didn't consider Sutta Goswami's birth because that, that disqualification is removed by his hearing from Sukadev Goswami. This means that thousands of years ago, there was no bar to learning or preaching the transcendental science because of inferior birth. The rigidity, and that's why the Western devotees, when they came to India, when they came to India, naturally there is no such thing of Brahmana, Chatriya, Vaishya, Shudra, Baikas in the Western devotees. When they came to India, they were preaching to Indians and some of the Indians, because of immaturity, they would not listen to them saying that, you know, what is your qualification? <laughs> they would not listen. So Prabhupada said, this is never there. But anybody who knows the science of Krishna is qualified. The rigidity of the so-called caste system in Hindu society became prominent within only 100 years ago. India became corrupt only 100 years ago. When all these things, I was, uh, I went, I was visiting one one family, and he asked about my spiritual master, and I said my spiritual master is born in Chicago, <laughs> and he is a Jew, Jewish by birth, Radhanath Swami, and he is my spiritual master. Then he says. Um, I don't feel like this is our culture. I don't feel like we can hear our own culture 
from somebody who is born here. So people have this contamination in mind. But here it says that there is no such consideration. Only consideration is do you know the science of Krishna? Now, who is a guru? It is said a guru is one who knows the science of Krishna, independent of their birth, caste, creed, and other things. And proper says that this contamination, so-called caste system in Hindu society, became prominent within only 100 years. Before that, it was not there. Even the Brahmanas are hearing from Sutta Goswami, who is from a lower caste. So, uh, only 100 years ago, this became prominent. Uh, and or so... When the number of Dvija Bandhus or disqualified men in the families of higher caste increased, Lord Chaitanya revived the original Vedic system and he elevated Thakur Haridas to the position of Namacharya. Haridas Thakur was not even born in Banashram. He was born in a Muslim family. Um, and he was given the Namacharya or the authority in preaching the glories of chanting the holy name of Krishna, holy name of the Lord. Although his Holiness, Srila Haridas Thakur was pleased to appear, was pleased to appear in a family of Mohammedans. Such is the power of pure devotees of the Lord. The Ganges water is accepted as pure and one can become purified after taking a bath in the waters of the Ganges. But as far as the great devotees of the Lord are concerned, they can purify a degraded soul even by being seen by a low born or what to speak of association. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to purify the whole atmosphere of the polluted world by sending qualified preachers all over the world and it remains with the Indians to take up this task scientifically and thus do the best kind of humanitarian work. The mental diseases of the present generation are more acute than bodily diseases. People are, people are quite fit bodily actually, but people are very disturbed mentally. The mental diseases of the present generation is more acute than bodily diseases. It is quite fit and proper to take up the preaching of Srimad Bhagavatam all over the world without delay. Mahatmanam Abhidhana also means dictionary of ordinary devotees or a book full of words of great devotees. Such a dictionary of words of great devotees and those of the Lord are in the Vedas and aligned literature, specifically Srimad Bhagavatam. In other words, um, the glories of the Lord, the glories of the pure devotees of the Lord are contained in Srimad Bhagavatam. Anybody who sincerely hears Srimad Bhagavatam will be removed from all the disqualifications, all the mental agitations and diseases. Everything will be removed and one will come out completely pure if one simply takes to this hearing and reading of Srimad Bhagavatam. So that's if there are any discussion, we can take any questions. Anybody would like to ask anything? Hare Krishna Prabhupada Nanda Pranam Jai Sri Da Prabhupada. Prabhuji, uh, so uh, Shringi, uh, he offended Vaishnava, right? So uh, did he not? Commit Vaishnava Pratin, or because he was Brahmana, or because Parikshit Maharaj did not have any inimical uh, attitude with this incident, he didn't get any Prat. So you are saying, did Shingi get an offense? Yeah, means usually if we uh, commit Vaishnava Prat, means if we uh, misbehave with Vaishnava, then we commit Vaishnava Prat, right? So in this condition it was not Vaishnava Prat. It was a it was a great offense. And that's what his father says. You have committed a great offense. What the offense was, it's not mentioned. Although it is a will of the Lord, Sringi would still get the reaction. The example that comes from Bhagavatam is um Akadura he came to take Krishna from Lindam. And gopis were very displeased with Akrura. He says, you are not Akrura, you are Krura. Krura means you are very cruel because you are separating Krishna from us. And it is said in 10th canto of Bhagavata, later on, during the time of Shavantaka jewelry, um, it says uh, Akrura had to suffer and he was removed from, he had to leave his own 
family and his own Dwarka uh, for a few years and suffered in separation and that was because of his reaction. Although Krishna had to leave Vrindavan, that was the will of the Lord because he had to stay out of Vrindavan for 100 years um, and Akura was only an instrument but because still he um, displeased the gopis of the Lord, he had a reaction. So here, although Maharaj Parikshit situation was the will of the Lord, because Shringi became an instrument, reaction would be there, but we don't know what that is. Okay, thank you, Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Anything else? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much for such a wonderful class, Prabhuji. Uh, just in uh, like respect to Harshini Mataji's question, so shall we take this as an understanding that you know by these past, even though these are past times, they are made so so we can understand. Nobody can be spared from the Vaishnava Prad, even if they are at such a high post as you know Sh Shramik Shringi Rishi or you know anybody. As a matter of fact. But even though they are happening in the past time, so understanding that this story has to happen, but a lesson needs to be learned for us. Can we take it in this way? That nobody yes, is feared from Vaishnava Bharat? Yeah, that is true, Mataji. Um, you know, that, like the way we can uh, see the, how the karma principle works. For example, if somebody is meant to be insulted, Suppose, because of his own karma, he insulted somebody else, he is meant to be insulted. And if I insult that person, then actually I'm the instrument of his karma. But because I insulted him, that karma that he has is transferred to me. Now, I will have to go through the reaction of it. Although I'm the instrument of somebody else's karma, I still get the karma and that person's karma is transferred to me. I understand, Prabhupada. Thank you so much. Thank you. And why am I chosen? I am chosen because I have that inclination for this kind of a yes. tendency. So Krishna is using me just to show me what can happen, what kind of mentality can bring what kind of a result. And I will, if I am intelligent, if we are intelligent, we will learn from our mistakes what oh. not to do. And because we have that tendency, we are incriminated. Oh, I understand. To show me my tendency. Oh, see, you have this inclination. So you did this and see what reaction you got. I understand. Mm -hmm. Thank you so our, much, Prabhuji. Our mistake is there also. That's why we are getting... I mean, it was will of the Lord, but seeing a mistake is there. Mm -hmm. Understand that. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anything else? We uh, Thank Prabhuji, you I have a question for joining. Uh, yes, please come on, Prabhuji. So, Prabhuji, isn't it the will of the Lord? Like the, the the circumstances which happened, like in case of Jay Vijay, it, you know, everything was known already that this is what going to happen. Similarly, in case of Parikshit Maharaj, also, I mean, it was all pre decided, right? That he will be cursed and he will have to leave this world within seven days. So it is as per the God's plan yes. only. So again, Shringi was just an instrument, yes. right? It was the will of the Lord. It was already destined. He was just an instrument. But because he also had a mistake, he was an instrument. Um, but because his heart was not pure and he was immature and he was proud, the reaction came to him. And he was made the instrument for that pastime to happen. But he was proud and he was immature, so he has to be punished for that. And that's how he was punished. By committing that mistake, the punishment went back to him. Because just because somebody is proud, mentally, there is no reaction. Because no reaction if the mind is impure. But Krishna will put us in such a situation that we will make some mistake because our internal software is not clean. clean. And then the reaction will come. What is inside will come outside sooner or later, and then we will be we will be eliminated. 
Okay, so even with the uh, associates also, it is like they are punished for uh, whatever karma or baggage that they have and then they can get rid of it and become pure devotees. Is, is that understanding correct, Prabhuji? I mean, Singh, he is not an associate. He was influenced by Kali Yoga, whereas Maharaj Padikshit was influenced by the will of the Lord. Singh was clearly influenced by a material um, contamination. But he was punished for uh, uh, his inner mentality. What inside comes outside, when it comes outside, the reaction is there in Kali Yuga. But just inside the action won't be there. And but that's sir, why... Parikshit Maharaj, the mistake that he did, uh, putting a dead snake around the sage. Yeah, so his, um, his putting a dead snake around the sage was just... Um, Krishna become Krishna acting in him through anger. Even a pure devotees can become angry, but it is described yesterday we were discussing Krishna as Rishi Kesh, the controller of the senses. Pure devotees' senses and mind is fully controlled by Krishna. Okay, Prabhu. So it's not just the will will be. So um, no, no, nothing happened to Parishit Maharaj. He he went back to, uh, uh, I mean, to Golok Vrindavan. But uh, just that it was Shringi who was, uh, I mean, who had this version of a who had to suffer in the material. Yes, Krishna just called Parishit Maharaj back, and it is said that he heard Hari Katha, and even just before Takshar came, he left the body by himself. He didn't even suffer. The bite of snake. He was just in his past meditation. He just heard Harikatha and he left. But the bird came, just put poison in his body, and his body was on fire. That was like what we call the last rites or Antim Zamskar. But Parikshit Maharaj was completely protected by the Lord. And it is said that even when he was cursed, he surrendered to the Lord, and so he was not overwhelmed by fear. He had no fear. And the Lord fully protected him. Such a nice way. I mean, he left. He heard Hari Katha and then he went back to God. So nothing happened to Parikshit Maharaj. But Shringi was incriminated. Okay, Prabhuji. Thank you for clarifying. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. All right. So we'll end here. Thank you for patiently listening. If I spoke anything wrong, please forgive me as a humble servant. My obeisances to Lord. Panchakal Patavi Besha, Kripa Sindhu Bay Evacha, Patitanam Pavan, Vaishnavism, and Mother. Ananta Koti Vaishnav in the Kija Shabu. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, then with Thank you very much. Thank you, Prabhuji Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji Hare Krishna. Thank you, Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Don't go for now. Hare Krishna, Sanjay Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhuji. 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 Thank you